Hello, everybody. I hope this stream is coming through today. Uh, we're back. It's Edie and I here. Uh, it's Monday, April 13th. We have a special guest today, uh, a friend of mine, a great artist named uh, Sharmishta Carr is joining us from London, Ontario. Talk a little bit more about her in a little bit. Having a little bit of trouble making sure the uh, link is working today. I'm really hoping uh, that it is. Um, maybe if you're uh, on Facebook, I'm going to put a new link to Edvideo and my personal Facebook group because I'm not positive that the one that Facebook provided is working. So let me uh, take a little look here. Just bear with us like we're saying every day we're just trying to get a little better at this um and make sure it works lots lots to learn here uh so let me let me see if this is working if anyone is watching and uh, you're able to see it you can please comment if you can uh it's normally that when i put the link in it shows that a countdown that uh it's going to play so let me uh let me just try this new link and we'll just see if it works um, one moment, please. I'm just going to edit my post and try uh, a new link. Let's see if this, if this works. We're just learning here. We're not, we have no formalized training in doing live web streaming shows, technically or conceptually. Uh, let me, I'm just going to click and see if that link is, yes, it is. That one works. So, okay. Uh, I'm just going to change that to correct link. Here we go. This is the adventures you can have uh, on doing live web streaming, working with a lot of technology. How are you doing today, Edie? I'm doing good. How are you? I'm pretty good. I'm pretty good. Um, so how, what did you think of our first week of doing a web show, it Open Circuits? It felt really long and really short at once. Yeah. Any highlights for you? Um, starting it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah, I know. Um, okay, so uh, if you've never watched our show before, can you describe we a little bit what we do? We with artists every weekday at 2 p.m. And um, it's fun. It is fun. Are you having fun with it? Yeah. Yeah? That's good. Well, we had some great guests in the first week, and and we're going to talk about what we've got coming up. Uh, the first week was just sort of like a soft launch for us. We were um, just, you know... Oh, someone else is watching. Oh, good. It. Somebody's Hello. seeing it, I guess. That's good to know. All these shows get archived anyway, so you don't have to watch it live. You can watch it later. You don't even have to really watch it, because it's a little bit of a talk show. It's something you could just listen to, almost yeah. like a podcast in the background. <clears throat> and uh, we have uh, a lot of uh, interest. Uh, now we're feeling confident, I guess, enough to announce some of our future shows. So let's let's uh, let's take a look what we've what we've got here. Oh wow! Okay. So today, April thirteenth, we're about to talk to Sharmish Dakar. Uh, tomorrow is a very special day. What is it, Edie? It's pet show and tell day, but we don't have very many people. So if you have a pet, you need to. Um, contact us like right now or very early in the morning tomorrow. That's right, yeah. So we'll do another, some more promo for that tonight, but hope yeah. we got one or two people ready to with pets to show and tell them. Um, and we'll see how many we can get uh, tomorrow as well. We just want to meet you, meet your pets, talk about things. Yeah and ask questions about your pet. April 15th this Wednesday, a special birthday show for... Jenny Norton, my mom. And how old is she turning? She's turning 40. That's right. She doesn't look a day past 35, though, I'd say. <laughs> Not even. Uh, so that's going to be fun. We'll, uh, we'll have Jen here in person. And we'll just kind of goof around, but talk about her work and uh, try some funny things, I think. Mm -hmm. It should be hilarious. We'd love it if you could join us. Uh, and... Um, uh, kind of uh, wish Jen a happy birthday on Wednesday, every weekday at 2 p.m. We're on April 16th. Jose Andreas Mora, who's just here picking up some projectors safely. 
uh, amazing video artist and I'm excited to show you some documentation of his incredible work. Then April 17th, Ivana Dizdar uh, joining us, talking about some of her incredible video productions. A few others just confirmed recently. April 20th, Tasman Richardson, dear friend uh, and uh, artist and someone I have a great respect for, talk about his work and his ideas about video. April 21st, something a little different, but very fun, The Great Orbax. Great Orbax will be joining us here. Um, and then uh, uh, April 22nd, Amy Lockhart, legendary animator artist joining us from Chicago. April 23rd, Fez Stenton, video genius, joining us from Toronto, talking about what he does with video and events and uh, also occupied VR, his company. Then April 27th, Alejandro Garcia Contreras, joining us all the way from the residency he runs in Chiapas, Mexico, giving us a little tour of that, talking about the amazing work that he does, incredible, incredible uh, ceramic and sculpture and 2D work, all sorts of things. A dear, dear friend of mine, Alejandro. And then uh, May 1st, we have Versa, Versa Visuals uh, <clears throat> joining, joining us all the way from Guelph, talking about their live visual and music uh, project that's been ongoing, Versa. Uh, and many more are kind of coming up too. So we got a lot, a full schedule here, Monday to Friday, every weekday at 2 p.m. with Edie and I here, broadcasting from our super secret location <laughs> at 404 Road, Guelph, Ontario, Canada. Uh, safely quarantined in here. We're the only ones in here. So we'll keep broadcasting from here while it's still possible to do that. But now we have something really fantastic coming up. We have. Uh, um, an artist that I've had the pleasure to meet a few times and work with uh, once. Uh, we're going to show some examples of that. Um, uh, we're, let's take a look and see if, oops, if she's still here. This is uh, going to try to link up with Sharmishta Kar. Let's, let's find her on FaceTime. Let's go full screen on this. Sharmi, are you there? Hi, Scott. I'm here. Uh, you're there. We can see you. We can hear yes. you. You can see and hear us as well. Okay. Uh, Absolutely. Very well. Okay. We're yeah. getting a, a, we had a little bit of problems when we first connected with the microphone cable here, causing us a little grief. I'm just going to wiggle yes. that and it's kind of being intermittent a bit. I'm not sure if that's coming through on the broadcast. And okay. We're hoping it's mm -hmm. going to behave. This is a very old cable. And uh, it's going to go like this. All right. There we go. Sorry for that. Uh, hopefully that, yes, okay. that does the job. So how, mm -hmm. uh, how are things going there? Do you mind if I call um, you Charmy as I do? Oh, absolutely fine. Please go. <laughs> Thank you, Scott and Edie, for coming up with this great program. And I was watching thoroughly all the sessions you have done so far. And I see like... Everybody enjoy it and especially like the conversation you two have in the beginning and it's amazing. Yeah. Thank you for inviting me. Oh, it's an honor, uh, you know, when we thought about doing the show, I was thinking about who, who would be great guests and I uh, thought about you and then I saw that you were doing some live streaming of your own. Uh, we'll take a look at that later, but what have you been doing uh, for London Arts Council? Um, yes, uh, I kind of... Uh, join London Arts Council as a uh, artist educator. So they have uh, an amazing program where they hired artists and then artists make the curriculum and deliver the course in, in the school. And then for past few weeks, we uh, they developed a program uh, which is on live stream and uh, they invite artists and they do give uh, uh, some lessons or some art sessions where individual can uh, learn about that particular art form and they can do at their home with the uh, minimum uh, material available with them at this time. So I, I was very happy when they asked me to do some session on that. Um, and I did that and it's on Facebook, you might have seen them. Yeah. 
I have, and uh, later near the end of the show, I'd love to take a look at uh, some a few clips of those videos. Mm -hmm. uh, and I've uh, been inspired by one of them in particular, I made some fan art uh, based on it. We'll mm -hmm. take a look. So thanks for okay. uh, doing that yeah. and these ideas. Um, yeah. Let's just get into it. Like I, uh, I'd love to, I usually ask each guest sort of about um, uh, what, uh, uh, what, what they kind of like remember as their first memories of art, uh, maybe why they realized they were interested in it or maybe wanted to even pursue it. Do you have any like kind of early childhood memories about uh, experiences with art that got you going? Yes, absolutely. I'd love to share that part. Um, I grew up with art as my father is an artist and um, he does many more uh, are a lot more than me in terms of exploration and research uh, related to art and culture. So I kind of grew up seeing him uh, doing many paintings, sculpture, and many social events uh, in West Bengal in India. Uh, so that was kind of a, a source uh, into this uh, art and my relation with it. However, uh, I never got any formal lessons from him, even though he was uh, like guiding me, many, many artists, local artists uh, in my city and village. Uh, so I always complain him that you never sat with me to show, but I saw him doing. And after my uh, 12th standard, I kind of um, thought of pursuing it uh, a bit seriously and uh, I got admission in art college in Calcutta and since then it's part of me and I'm continuing it. Yeah. That's, that's, that's great. And uh, yeah. so um, tell us just quickly about like your education in India and then uh, maybe a little bit like why you thought, got the idea that maybe you continued that in Canada. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 Um, I did my uh, schooling and undergrad in Calcutta. Then I moved to um, Hyderabad uh, city in South India to do my first master's from University of Hyderabad in 2009. And after that, uh, I was invited to a studio in the western part of India. Uh, and then I taught for a year and I kind of uh, visited you for an artist residency program with a prestigious award from India. It's called Charles Wallace India Trust Award. And then uh, I was placed in an university and I saw that uh, there is a, a very good opportunity to do further research. Uh, uh, and I thought of seeing this embroidery as part of uh, uh, pedagogy and how it's being seen in Western countries and I started uh, applying and I saw Canada has a very strong practice of uh, embroidery and I got this opportunity at Western and my mentor supported me a lot in terms of encouragement and resources so I kind of thought of exploring the country here a bit more in terms of practicing here. Yeah. And you've been in Canada for about four years? Four years. Four years, yes. yeah? Yes, it's four years now. Well, later yeah. on, I'd love to get some of your impressions, sort of about uh, your impressions about Canada and, and India, maybe how they're mm -hmm. similar, how they're different. While mm -hmm. you're talking, I'm just going to start showing some images uh, sure. from your uh, from your website. Yeah, and, okay. um and so and we'll, we'll just keep chatting but so people can sure. show you some examples of your of your work so yeah. i'm starting with some of the older pages on your website that are more for like drawings and paintings yeah. is that is that sort of like i guess like almost everybody basically uh yeah. um kind of how you got into art initially mm -hmm. yes i mean um i love painting and uh, till 2008 i was mainly introduced to a uh, traditional medium like painting, sculpture, printmaking. And I, I, as a student, I loved drawing, still life, life study. So uh, and I was trained and did my first master's on creative painting. And I love realistic painting. But uh, I kind of uh, liked embroidered and it came later 
as a medium and then I kind of use it more uh, conceptually or thematically right now and it developed uh, gradually so yeah drawing and painting was my first um, medium and I still love and I do whenever I get a chance yeah yeah it's still there so do you think uh, is there a lot of uh, I mean in some ways do you think of drawing and painting is very similar to embroidery but just maybe with a very slow pen or is it uh, something you you think of a lot different because of you know the amount of time it takes or what or just sort of like the, the aesthetic or the feeling that it creates yes I think whatever you mentioned it's all there but for me um, I I kind of I loved all of them, all those three drawing, painting, and embroidery, but uh, embroidery kind of gives me a bit more uh, satisfaction in terms of the process of creation. And um, I feel that embroidery does reflect my understanding of drawing and painting through a different uh, medium and material. But it does reflect uh, the pace or and the process process of making the image on a different surface it's all connected i feel even though they're plastically they i mean the plasticity of the medium is different yeah and then um some of the things that you're that we're seeing live right now i'm not sure maybe you can't see because there's a bit of a delay with the channel um okay. but we're looking at some of your embroidery from a few years ago maybe eight or mm -hmm. eight years ago um mm -hmm. particularly like the uh the van gogh room uh the van gogh portraits so what, what's yeah. your interest in sort of recreating um like really famous iconic paintings but in embroidery what do you how do you think about that Mm, yes, that's, um, yeah, that's, that's very um, nice question. I always love that. Um, it's because um, when I was creating that, I was, uh, I moved from Hyderabad to a different city and I was working on the whole idea of knowing something, uh, the place, culture or people. And uh, I I consider art history as my kind of a virtual family which gives me uh, inspiration and resources to think and inspire me. So I was, uh, I started a series called Knowing Him and I chose one of the, the famous popular artists and the artwork to question myself and to reflect that how much I really know about the artist and his practice, his life. So I thought of creating those pieces and showing them from the back and not showing the beautiful side or the front part of the embroidery at all. So it's it remains it remain um, kind of a veiled image and a kind of uh, satisfaction or that incompleteness of that attempt to know him. Yeah. So that was the motivation and what what is i can't remember what the term is when when you show the front and the back something v versa yeah. or uh, yeah recto recto and verso recto and versa yeah that's right and it's, so it's... that that's a, a really interesting uh dynamic mm -hmm. of embroidery as far as like a two-dimensional art compared mm -hmm. to others where there's sort mm -hmm. of this option i suppose uh to either show uh one side or the other or both um, do you do you think about like how you're going to display it when you're making it, or is that something that comes a little later when you see what it looks like? Mm, uh, that series when I started, I I wasn't looking at the back, the verso part, um, before I stop it because I was when I'm making, I constantly look at the front, the recto because uh, I'm trying to kind of learn or know the real form and I'm concentrating on the front, but the back, which I end up showing, I do not, I didn't put any intentional attempt to uh, make it look how it might look. It just comes in the process. And I, at the end, I just turn it, flip back and see how it is. So there wasn't any intentional 
uh, attempt uh, to make how it it will look when I display. So there wasn't any um, yeah attempt to make the visual image or the effect in the beginning. Also, I'm, I'm curious um, your your techniques of embroidery. I mean, I I I don't know very much about embroidery though. I've been mm. trying to learn uh, mm. you know more about it recently. Um, mm -hmm. Are they are they sort of traditional techniques or standard? Are they from India? Are they from other places? I believe you use uh, a few different techniques. Like you showed me that a fascinating Japanese needle. Yeah, I which... have the tools. If you, uh, yeah, I was. Uh, I can show that as well. The, how it's been made. But um, yes, it's um, it's definitely a very basic embroidery technique. Uh, particularly when I started, it's just the back stitch we call it and. Uh, when I was reading about the history of embroidery, I was um, I was kind of very interested uh, to know more. When I saw that this embroidery is difficult to um, relate with any particular place because it traveled a lot from for uh, uh, colonial uh, history for trade, so it kind of blend a lot. It merged with culture and places. So uh, that is one thing, but definitely there are places which practices more uh, certain embroidery technique, and um, we know that. So in this, I used um, mainly backstitch, which I learned in India, and the banka, uh, the Japanese embroidery technique, I did learn again in India, and a friend of mine showed me how it's being done, and later. Uh, I did more research on it and I kind of now use it a bit more uh, thematically uh, with my work. So I do use uh, different techniques uh, in considering or, uh, the piece that I'm working. So I change the styles. Would, if you have that, the, is it got yeah. Banka? Yeah, yeah. Banka. Uh, yeah. Needle, could you show it to the viewers and explain it? You yes. Sh when you explained it, I was very fascinated, but it was yeah. so complicated. Yeah, I don't really it remember is. it, and uh, but I remember just thinking it's amazing that a device can exist yeah. to, to do yeah. that. Yeah. I mean, it's... Um, it, it, so this is uh, uh, the needle. Um, it has a body and uh, different needle and the sizes vary, so it. I don't know if you yeah. can see that. I think needle. we can see it. Yeah. Great, yeah. And thread, thread base. It's a hollowed needle, so thread goes from the back of the tool, and it comes through the needle and to the front. And there is a eye hole, and we bring that uh, thread from that person. And we need a very long uh, threader, so it's not a small one. It's really big. You can see that it's like almost uh, eight inch long. So uh, you just need to uh, send it from the front till the back. I don't know if you can see. So yeah. it's now thoroughly sent. And then I cut a small thread and this is the thread. Just have to push it through and then pull through the needle. Yeah, so kind of so you can see the thread is through the needle yes and then you just have to send the thread through the middle eye I can do it by hand so So yeah. now you can see it should be very smoothly placed, otherwise it doesn't work. So it's now comes like this. And I have a <laughs> embroidery hoop here, a fabric stretched on it. Yes. So it just makes a lot of uh, loops when we press it. So you just have to hold tight and press it. So it goes under the hoop. You can see that yes. the middle, yeah, and then pull it, and you pull it and press very 
close like next to that previous hole and it go it goes on making the hoop so is the advantage yeah. of this style that you just work from one side and you don't have to turn over your fabric uh, uh uh, I yes, I do turn over when I uh, decide that uh, which part I want in recto and which part I want in verso. So I flip back my fabric and change my hoop, and that's how I get get that um, like uh, cartographic map lo look like uh, surface on my work. So yeah, I can show a small piece that I'm working on now. Please. Yeah, I folded it. It's a big piece. So there I used um, this green part, you can see, that has that uh, bunker and the white um, here. This is also bunker. And this part I did run just to give a sense of a ripple kind of a surface. It's pretty big. But yeah, this is the bunker Okay, so you can see the kind of a furry carpet look like lots of look. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's that's gorgeous. Um, actually, I wanted to, I'm going to show some of your kind of more recent work from the last yeah. three or so years. I wanted to talk yeah. to you about yeah. that um, yes. sure. a, as, your, as your work gets, um, well, kind of bigger and I think maybe a little bit more uh, like for gallery style installations. Mm -hmm. um, you, I mean, you don't, you don't, people don't often really see like really large scale embroidery too often because I mean, it just takes so, so long, yeah. but I mean, how, how did you decide perhaps to start maybe thinking of it in a bigger scale and um, also like how it, I guess it could work more like in a white cube style gallery? Mm. Yes. Uh, uh, I am kind of with embroidery for uh, more than uh, 12 years now um, and I was constantly looking and hearing more suggestions that um, that you should not you know take help uh, from others because it takes a long time I said yes it does then uh, when I was reading about history and I saw the whole association of the size and uh, that it should be small maybe it generally practiced um, domestically so I, I was constantly thinking of uh, challenging that uh, notion and bringing that uh, meticulous uh, process into a large scale to see the process and um, kind of uh, give the time and bring that whole idea of labor. And when uh, for past uh, few years when I'm working on this um, whole idea of uh, shelter and the association with the place and living uh, and when I came out with the idea of a tent and I felt of doing this um, size which could be a life size of a tent so it just motivated me to work and work on a really large scale it, and it does it did take months to finish but uh, I was also trying to see how it might feel when you work on uh, this meticulous method on a very industrially produced material. Yeah. Well, I'm soon. I I am quite interested in this idea. This kind of uh, really uh, con uh, repeating theme in your work about this tent. You know, mm -hmm. it's. Uh, we'll take a look at some uh, examples of that. Or we have been, but we'll look at some more. Um, you know what uh what uh f for you is sort of some of your ideas about using the tent as a symbol like what what does that mean to you as and especially when you see it embroidered mm -hmm. um yes it it does mean a lot to me um i can just um say quickly uh, some stories about how i came or uh, working now with the form of um, like as a child we used to um, due to my father's profession he was a government school teacher uh, we lived in many many government housing as a child and my teenage and we 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 had that uh, kind of attachment and detachment 
or uh, in or about those places that we lived and we moved a lot in 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 that city and i kind of traveled also a lot a bit in india and outside india so when i came here i was uh, thinking about all these uh, binary ideas like attachment detachment known unknown um and i thought of uh, coming or i was working uh, how to express those um, feeling or expressions and i felt that uh, tent could be that form that architectural form which is uh, which is fragile which could mean a lot uh, in different culture different practices but uh, for me it's it's a place where uh, optimism happens i mean we think we think of um, betterment we think of uh, safety so i kind of uh, uh, saw that and uh, thought of uh, working uh, with that form even if we look at the history of tent we can go thousands of years um, before and see that how this whole tent that architectural form uh, is present and different purposes and helped people to feel safe and hopeful Yeah, I I think it's a fascinating symbol to use because um uh I mean it's a, fl- a flexible idea because uh, uh, depending on who you are, where you live, um mm-hmm. your pr- privilege, uh, all different mm-hmm. things whereas I mean uh uh it could be a thing for leisure like for camping, you know, for for yeah. fun, mm-hmm. uh for mm-hmm. less fortunate people it could be their home. um think for refugees or yes. homeless people or you know is a lo- it's a very loaded idea and then yes. to uh to also uh, um embroider onto tarp onto yes. a tarp that's i've never seen that before and uh i think that's a really interesting uh idea what why why did you get the idea to uh, embroider on tarps do yeah yeah because uh it struck me when uh, i was working on tent and i was looking at the uh, different forms of tent and um i saw it's mostly uh, used uh, outdoor and uh, it's like a structure it's a um, hard it's it's um it's in industrial made material that being used either canvas fabric or plastic and i uh when i was thinking of this whole um idea of that optimistic uh, uh, uh thoughts that can grow there and i felt like uh, why why not to see that uh, relationship of um those people who live inside them with a lot of hope um or that uh, the time they spend there and i kind of took that concept through the embroidery and um try to see how it might play with a industrially made hard object um which is generally placed outside to keep something uh, safe or guard cover so yeah it's just to see that conflict or how it can bring a new relationship yeah. well let's um, let's take a look at uh um um your one embroidered tarp that's embroidered with a tent at the uh exhibition mm-hmm. that uh that you and I participated in last year yes. almost one year ago is in uh, Helsinki yes. in Finland at Art Fair yeah. Suomi let's take a look at some images yeah. from here I prepped uh first of all I guess here's just uh, our booth had videos booth at this international art yes. fair it featured your work it will take a look closer at and also uh your former uh classmate Tyler Durbano um he's yes. now in, in Berry with some sculptures yes. Jessica Mensch with some uh paintings and Emily Pelstring with some animations so this is, we had a nice big booth there in this beautiful old cable factory uh so we figured out a good plan i think uh with all of us to show the different types of work try to make an interesting booth there's uh 
uh, one of Tyler's uh, tangled tails made of latex and uh, synthetic hair um, hanging there. Uh, also a very similar almost in some ways to embroidery as far as poking each hair into the into the silicone one by one, very methodical. Um, and here's, uh, well, in the middle, Emily's animation, but it's flanked with uh, uh, your embroiders. There's two of them. Um, uh, just the eyes. I, I'm trying to remember. I couldn't remember this morning. What are the, what are the titles of them? Um, those are um, ways of seeing. From there, I, I got that idea where um, I was uh, trying to portray how one might look um, with confidence and when when we clinch our eyes when we do not understand everything so it's those two eyes have two different expressions and again uh, both are there recto and verso right so it was interesting to see and they're supposed to be the mirror underneath so you can have that cycle of gaze like the viewer's eye, then this embroidered eye, and the reflection from the mirror. So, yeah, it was interesting to see. Well, it was a pleasure to show these, and it was also an amazing experience to work with you because uh, uh, because of your embroideries are quite can fold up quite small, and you brought all sorts of work that we could choose on the spot what yeah. to show. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. So that was a real treat. That never happens for international art fairs. And so you yeah. did bring your blue tent that we're taking a look at, or blue tarp, uh, mm -hmm. and we decided to put it on the outside of the booth, which I thought mm -hmm. was a great solution. Um, and I, when I was prepping these photos last night, I remembered something that uh, I thought was actually quite interesting. I remember at first we lit it from the top, from the outside, and that seemed to make sense and be the obvious thing to do. And then I think on the on the next day, we were, together, we sort of had this idea, like, let's actually, let's put that light inside of it. Yeah. And yeah. I think it worked a lot better, really mysterious yeah. and sort of added this uh, uh, kind of really interesting mystery uh, and glow to it as yeah. if as yeah. if there was, uh, you know, somebody in that tent or there's some life inside that tent. Absolutely. Um, yeah. And then we're, now we're seeing a picture of you standing beside it. And mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it was excellent to, to show that in this beautiful uh, factory. Um, so I just wanted to also say thanks again for your trust to work with me in that video on that initiative. And uh, you know, maybe we won't be doing things like that for some time now, but uh, it was really fun and we had a great team and Absolutely. it was a, a great experience and great, great, uh, uh, a great week to, to spend with some really wonderful people in mm -hmm. Helsinki. Absolutely, thanks God. Yeah. I do agree. Yeah. yeah, it was amazing. Uh, yeah, yeah, amazing experience for me too. And I, I mean, apart from the artwork, your amazing organization opportunity that you you kind of brought to all of us, and um, your your talk there, um, and that was also very interesting to uh, hear and listen um, to other speakers and. It was an amazing experience all over um, in, in, in total, yeah. Yes, yes, um, thank you. Now uh, I'd love to take a, a little peek at uh, what you've been doing really lately with um, uh, doing uh, some live streaming of your own uh, mm -hmm. out of uh, London where you're, you're at. Are you, you mm -hmm. uh, kind of stuck at your house right now? <laughs> yes, kind of. Yeah, it's it's. I mean, almost um, same with most of us, I think. And um, yeah, London Arts Council um, kind of came up and they're uh, still working on this whole project on live streaming uh, different artists and uh, musician, uh, singer, visual artist. So they're inviting them and um, those artists are giving um, each stations on art and what were they are practicing, their main, main practice um, for an hour, 45 minutes. It depends, but uh, people can um, access them from wherever they are at home. And um, it's, it's kind of uh, relaxing, it's uh, learning and sharing uh, by maintaining the wherever the distance or the current condition that we are in. 
so um, when they approached me i kind of came up with uh, these two particular uh, art from for india and they are uh, indigenous paintings style um, pretty old and it practiced by two different um, communities and those art reflects uh, the nature uh, the culture they are in their practices their beliefs so i did uh, make some samples and uh, gave uh, two sessions on them and it looks people did like it so yeah these are some samples that i made there yes yeah so we were just watching yeah. the video that's sort of yeah. like a recreation of that a uh, sort of a making mm -hmm. of um, yeah, I wanted to yeah. ask you about something you just said and something I noticed when I was watching those videos about how mm -hmm. you talk about art as being uh, relaxing. Um, mm -hmm. um, I, I mean, I, I really wonder about people's motivation to make art and what, uh, what drives people uh, to mm -hmm. do it when, mm. you know, for example, sometimes it's easier to do other things like, for example, to be lazy, like to consume art, to watch videos or just kind of chill out and do do nothing mm -hmm. really mm -hmm. i mean mm -hmm. what what for you is uh is your motivation that you would choose to do your artwork uh, especially when it takes so many hours over you know just really doing nothing you know and is it what what is it is it the relaxing thing or mm -hmm. what, what is what is your motivation um yes uh i feel like even being lazy gives you something i feel every act exchanges things and when i do make art i i feel that that the process gives me more than what i give to that form uh, it's just not very uh, materialistic uh, thing but i i kind of maybe i'm addicted to it you know <laughs> i feel more drawn to it and it just happens and um yes it just draws me i may not be able to explain why i go on making but it's something more than um i can explain probably <laughs> yeah um yeah but it's it's the process it's the touch it's that uh, form which comes up each time i draw or stitch for me yes it's an exchange for me. It's a conversation. Yeah. I'm always just curious yeah. what that is. Uh, what is that little fire in an artist's belly that, you know, makes them just keep doing it, you know? <laughs> yes. Uh, you know, because yeah. uh, sometimes it, I think it is, I think for a lot of people like you, it is relaxing. And other people, they might think of it more like work, you know, as they call themselves <laughs> uh, yeah. workers, cultural workers or whatever. Um, we're just looking at the, your other video um, hmm. where you're showing how to do this traditional pattern that's sort of like the hourglass to represent mm -hmm. a person or an animal. And when mm -hmm. I saw that, I was just fascinated by, by uh, that idea of it. Um, mm -hmm. I've, I've never seen it. Can you exp I can't get the audio from your mm -hmm. live stream, but can you explain a little bit of what that's that okay. shape yeah. is? Yeah, um, that particular um, technique and the art form called Warley. It's, um, it's practiced by a community mm, in uh, near Mumbai city. Um, and they, they, they were hunters. So later they couldn't do that and they became a farmer by profession. And they did these paintings and came up with this very sim simple simplified or abstract you can say very strong uh, form with basic geometric form like lines triangle circle spiral and open-ended spirals so and they kind of made all of the creatures like human being animals based on those basic geometric forms so that our glass is a primary form for human figure animals if you put it vertical or horizontal you can make many different um, entities or living creature and they did observe particular feature like dog or different animals and they add with that uh, hourglass form so it's it's pretty amazing 
how they practice it over years and yeah but i just thought it was so so beautiful and uh, uh an interesting way the way uh first of all you can make patterns with it um but yeah. also like i think i really love the uh the idea of it that it's uh it's basically a human is one way straight up and then yes. and the animal is sideways and sideways. sort of how similar yeah. they are as yeah. as animals um, yeah. yeah um so last night actually i i i'm a, just a curator mm. uh sometimes maybe i think curators are just failed artists but i'm also a very free artist because i don't have exhibitions like i feel like i can uh do whatever i want so i still draw sometimes and i was inspired yeah. by your lesson so i made um mm. Um, maybe you can't see it right now, but I made one drawing sort of based on that idea, which I, wow. I thought was uh, really, really beautiful. So I really want you to thank you for, uh, for sharing that uh, technique. It inspired me, and Edie was making some drawings of it too. Um, thank you. Yeah. Thanks to both of you. <laughs> Thanks, Edie. <laughs> so are you, uh, yeah. are you hoping to continue doing some live streams of your sharing your art practice? Um, yes, I, I was invited uh, by two friends of mine from India, and they are also kind of uh, requesting me to do two more uh, small sessions um, and to, uh, art universe, uh, to an university. Uh, some of the students would like to have two sessions and... Um, a museum in Calcutta, they wanted to do a small 15 minutes video on uh, on any uh, uh, art form which reflects cultural heritage. So yeah, those two projects are on my hand right now. Probably within a week, I'll be doing those. Um, yeah, and my embroidery work is going on. Some projects are coming beginning of next year. So. Yes, these are happening right now in this quarantine period. Yes. Well, we're all trying to figure it out. It's we're only like kind of a month or so in to people really realizing what's going on. So people are trying to adapt fast, I think. And that yeah. that's, you yeah. know, really up to an individual, whether they're ready to keep going or do new things or they're mm. still kind of trying to figure everything out. Um, yeah, so I mean, I, I congratulate you for uh, for getting online and sharing sharing what you can with some new people. Maybe trying to give some some people some maybe potentially some distraction or inspiration or new ideas about uh, what what they can do. Um, it's all it's all great. Um, yeah, is there anything else you'd like to uh, to share with uh, your the viewers or any ideas that you've been thinking about? Um, I mean, I I really thank to you and London Arts Council to come up with this live streaming thing, which uh, kind of brings uh, people to many larger, many more people and a larger audience, and um, that is amazing to see and connect. Even though we 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 are in different places, so. Uh, Artists always think, and I feel every individual thinks as well. And there is always a chance to um, have the exchange uh, between ideas and create a connection that one can be inspired and have some different time uh, of our own. So it's it's amazing. I I'm just happy to be part of this live streaming at this time uh, and share my experience and what I'm doing. I'll be happy. It gives a different time or experience to somebody else um, through this platform. Yeah. Well, well, we're very happy you could join us today and share um, with our viewers some of the things that you do. It's lovely to see you and also to see your work and hear a little bit uh, more about it. Um, so mm -hmm. stay safe in London and stay busy and stay positive and i'm uh, really looking forward to when we can see each other in real life again whenever yes. that is it will happen sometime in the future and uh, i'd love to work uh, work on another exhibition someday with you too when when we can yes absolutely thanks so much 
I'm Scott again, and I was very happy when I hear um, from you about this, and I'm really glad to be part of this program. And thanks to both of you, Edie and Scott. <laughs> and I, I again, I'm saying like I love the way you converse in the beginning and <laughs> and make all the artists to be very uh, comfortable when we all chat. <laughs> So it's it's amazing. I I believe whoever is watching us, they'll be happy to to see you. Well, yeah. thanks so much, Charmy. Uh, we're we're just trying to figure it out, and if we figure if we just get a little better each day, then uh, that that's progress uh, um, yeah. for us. And if people like it, then that that's fantastic. I'm just trying to trying to stay busy, try to yeah. keep things going. So. We'll sign yeah. off. Thanks so much. Yeah. And yeah. Um, we're just going to, Edie and I are just going to chat a little bit and then we're going to yeah. sign off. And at the end, if people are watching and they want uh, Sharmishta's contact info, there's a title card with their website and Instagram. Take care. We'll talk again soon, Charmy. Yes. Yeah. Take care too. Bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. All right, Edie. So, was that interesting to hear about all that? Yeah. I thought so too. So um, what one thing that I really wanted to let everyone know at home is how big of a help ED is on this show. I know I do a lot of the talking, but there's a lot of things that you may not know uh, that Edie's doing. She's doing all the YouTube comments with her live viewers. She's making these um, uh, wonderful backdrops here. Right, right now we have one to showcase, promote our pet show and tell day tomorrow. We'd love to have anybody with a pet. Um, con Skype in, FaceTime in. We'd love to meet you and your pet and ask you some questions. Um, Edie also does the intro and exit music with her keyboard here. Um, one thing though is she doesn't. She's a great piano player, but we don't have a very good keyboard. It's basically a toy, and it can only play one note at a time. So we we're wondering if any of our viewers have a keyboard with a headphone jack out. That's uh, it's got to be better than this one because that's not hard to beat. Uh, we're hoping to uh, maybe maybe upgrade that and get a better uh, get a better keyboard sometime soon, um, but that's okay. We're just doing what we can, and then we're gonna work towards something really special this week. We thought it'd be really fun instead of just doing these paper backdrops, which works great. Uh, Edie's actually very experienced at doing video mixing. live video mixing. What program do you use? Yes, and you've done that live before? Yes. And what do you like about Arena? What can you kind of do with it? Um, you can do so much on Arena. You, you can get, you done, like you get any video you want onto it. And then you can do the craziest stuff with it because you can like, you can mix videos, you can put effects on them, you can like, tons of things and I really like Karina. Mm -hmm. Well, so we're going to set up some, one day this week, it'll take a little bit of time, a uh, live video mixing uh, setup with ED using Arena. So instead of just having a still backdrop, it will have a projection of live visuals and uh, ED even makes her own live visuals. So make it a little more trippy and psychedelic and a little bit more in movement when uh when we're talking to people so we're excited so check back uh for that um for sure well i think that's uh pretty much the end of the show thanks so much to our viewers thanks to sharmish dakar who is our guest today and thanks for everyone who helps out and uh with this show and we're really looking forward to tomorrow why because it's pet show and tell day and Please, please, um, if you have a pet, you need to tell us now. And, yeah. Well, sounds fun. All right. Let's, uh, let's get ready to sign off. Thanks, Edie. Let's <laughs> uh, take a look at some graphics, and Edie's going to play us out now. Here we go.